Nobody cares how brilliant something is unless it's pretty and cool. This is a story I've never really told and only a few people ever know that I built this thing. And this goes back to around 2008. And actually the seed that planted for me to build this car happened with the presidential election. And I am by no means taking a political stance at the moment, other than politicians are you, well, let's just say you, you wanna bring a shovel to when they're talking most of the time. One individual back then, I remember in a huge speech he was doing, there was a moment he was like, and I will help Detroit retool so the energy, fuel efficient, affordable cars of tomorrow are built here for the sake of the future and the world. And I'm thinking, dude, you're not Kennedy. We're not going to the moon. Why are you all cheering? Did you bring your shovels and you're excited? Is that why? So it just, I don't know, it just, it just annoyed me because I knew like, you're not gonna do that. And that was, that was a crazy time for everything, for banks, for prices of cars, for life in general, and of course the automotive companies getting bailed out. GM being in major trouble. And I'm watching this going, this is our moment to rethink business. This is our moment to do something. A couple years go by and I'm looking going, okay, that's what they were saying. We were gonna do this for the future tomorrow. And all we did is spend all of our money to bail out these companies. And we're back to selling big SUVs and muscle cars. And muscle cars, it's like, this is the 60s again? We're just going back to the 60s. What, what are we actually doing? That, that was my thought. And I'd be riding around Columbus on a motorcycle or whatnot. And I'd just be looking at cars. I'm like, these are stamped steel boxes with chairs bolted in them and you know, a reciprocating engine. We've been doing this since the mid 1930s. There is no way this is the best we can do. And it just ground on me and ground on me. At the time, I really liked Chaparral race cars. Well, I still do. They're amazing. You know, the Jim Hall's Chaparral cars in the 60s. I mean, he made a composite monocoque chassis in the early 60s. That's, that's 20 years before Ferrari was doing it in Formula One, if I'm not mistaken. So that was neat. Something inspired me. And he kept all the cars. And that annoyed me because I really want one. So I was like, I wonder how I could replicate one. And uh, I was researching things. And then as you do late at night or whatever, when you're interested, you keep researching, you just keep going on materials. And it started to hit me. There is a load of different ways that you could make a cheaper, fast, strong structure. You could either make something more recyclable or sustainable, potentially less energy. You could make a composite structure. It could be faster to produce. And it was just hitting me. I'm like, okay, well, the entire modern industrialized world was fueled by oil and built on steel. It's no wonder our cars are still effectively that today. Can we do better? So I thought of a bunch of concepts to make and do. And then of course me being me, I'm like, I'm going to do this, <laughs> which is brilliant because I'm not Elon Musk. And I didn't just sell PayPal for I don't know, $130 million or something like that. But of course I have to build some kind of prototype. There's just a load of neat ways to make cars, but I wanted to make something that could at least show what, what cool is, what is efficient, right? So just wipe the canvas clear. And so I chose to make it actually diesel powered. This the prototype that I called the Omega car because Americans, or at least at that time, don't really get electric, like how efficient it is because we don't have a real good basis of comparison yet. And people haven't really thought about, you know, energy, where's the energy come from? What does that take to make? So I wanted to still do something with fuel. And the other thing too is, you know, wherever you're building cars, just because we can build supercars and drive them here, or something crazy like that doesn't mean it's gonna work in Mongolia or something. Doesn't mean that anybody on the rest of the planet can afford something like that. So I wanted to make a car that, you know, could be cheaply made anywhere, but of course this is America and <laughs> nobody cares how brilliant something is unless it's pretty and cool. So I had to make a sports car, two seat sports car. And diesel's a very flexible fuel, but of course even the prototype could be changed to electric or whatnot. So I started making this thing. And uh, I was so driven and so on top of this. And I started building it in 2012. And that was uh, 2013 is when I started Genius Garage. So that became a huge amount of time and energy. And my prototype car slowed down. And I finished it, finished it. The first year I was doing Genius Garage. And I took it, actually the Pittsburgh Cars and Coffee guys will know about it because I took it to a hangar party there when the Genius Garage race was there and talked about it, which I'm kind of embarrassed on because I talked too long and whatever. I probably sound like the one wacky eccentric inventor, but it was neat. And the Pittsburgh guys were super nice to me. You know, I just covered it up because I didn't want it to get out yet. And quite frankly, I saw somebody 
promoting that they were going to be able to build a very powerful exotic car and kind of uh, talking it up really big and it never happened and I didn't want to do that. So that was my experiment and I showed it to them and it was painted in kind of a crazy iridescent color at the time as a concept. But after that, I'd become so busy with building Genius Garage that I didn't know what the heck to do with it. I was thinking world level and manufacturing and civilization and industrial because I knew I could build cars differently and I made this beautiful, cool prototype and I put it in my garage and I'm like, well now what the heck am I going to do with it? I'm just a guy. I don't have loads of money to market this. I don't know world leaders. I can't start a manufacturing company. Well thought out, Casey. So it sat in my garage for actually a few years. And I didn't promote it, I didn't publicize it. I finished it off differently, I changed the color, made it more subtle. And um, now I just wanted to utilize it for, for teaching. So I actually brought it in a genius garage to inspire and whatnot by. But I'm actually finishing it up. And the thing that's cool about it is I think you're your own worst critic. Whether you're building a hot rod, a race car, or you're just trying to think of the next cool exotic car, like what am I gonna get? Is this gonna be cool? And I was definitely my own worst critic on it because the car was cool. And I didn't pay attention, I just put it out of my mind. I almost got paranoid, I'm like, what am I gonna do if I actually build a car like this? Who's, you know? So I just relaxed on it and started finishing it off. I'm like, you know what, this car was cool. This was a cool vision. Even if I went off half cocked to do something grand back then, this is worth doing. I do think it's reasonable to come close to or crack 100 miles to the gallon on this thing. Just straight internal combustion. You can easily make something that could be electric or it, you know, it could be natural gas powered, whatever the, the power plant is. Because what we do is we make cars, forget the drivetrain, the car itself is expensive to produce. It's toxic, they don't last that long. So if you really wanna think about the future, what does that look like? So I dig supercars, but for me, this is the one thing I had to do is make that a, one awesome stab at making that car for the world. The Omega car, is my low energy, better for the environment, more affordable sports car. And lots of other people have taken similar stabs at stuff like that. And everybody, once in a while, somebody else has to take a new stab at it. But uh, it's a great adventure and a pretty car. And uh, I think I might just have to take it out to some cars and coffee and have a little fun with it this year.